Dan Ullman, Mike Beer kicking off the 50 cent pick four at Keeneland on Bluegrass Saturday with race number eight. It's the grade one Madison for Phillies and Mares going seven eighths of a mile. Let's take a look at this field. It's a pretty good bunch, Mike, and they're racing for $600,000. Vava is the two to one morning line favorite, despite the fact that we haven't seen her since the Keeneland fall meet of 2023, where she ran a career best 101 buyer speed figure in the Raven run. She's been preparing at Keeneland for Cherie DeVoe, and uh, with her tactical speed, she could probably work out a good trip from out there. Yeah, exactly. It seems like layoffs don't really matter as much anymore as they used to either, Dan. They're going to come back in a grade one race. I'm assuming that she's going to be ready to go here. This is her distance. The last You mentioned last time we saw her Raven run course and distance, she was awful good that day. Vava ran down Alva Star to win the Raven run. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for the Madison. And Alva Star is going to be up close to the pace. Kind of a horse that's key to this pace scenario is Icicles, Mike. A horse that's been showing big speed going two turns on the synthetic at Turfway, but has also shown some sprint speed in her career. Alva Star to me is a need the lead type. I wonder if these two maybe hook up a little bit. Yeah, that, that's certainly possible. I mean, I think Alva Star is pretty quick here. I suppose the idea with, with Icicles is, you know, listen, big price in this race, cutting back, um, just sort of taking a shot here. I don't see why they would take her speed away from her in this race. We'll see um, if she's fast enough. To me, the key to this whole pace thing um, is the three, Pot and Saltry. She's another horse cutting back in here. She's plenty fast. She's probably better sprinting. And it just feels like, you know, after taking so much money in her first two starts this year going long, she might get overlooked a little bit in here. This is the kind of race to me she's meant for. That's a very good point. Good tactical speed for red carpet ready. Likely has her in the spot time form. U.S. Uh, has placed her. And the five Mary Quite Contrary is the fastest time form. U.S. late pace rating would benefit if the splits are very fast. We're going to start things off with Sterling Silver, who's finished first in three of her last four races, including her seasonal debut at Tampa Bay going seven eighths of a mile. Let's watch this race right now for Sterling Silver. And it's not like there was a very fast pace. And it's not like this seems this is the most ideal trip turning for home, Mike, because Sterling Silver and Javier need somewhere to go. An opening does open up. And once it does, I like this kick. Yeah, this is a, the easiest kind of win here. Everything ultimately worked out. She got clear with plenty of time. She's too good for these horses. She runs them right over at the end of this race um, and wins pretty easily. I mean, the margin of victory is short, but she was way the best in there. Um, also just, I like how, how much better she got. She was good at three. She was way better last year at four. Um, she won that gallon bloom. I don't know how they decided to disqualify her that day, but they did. But either way, she was much the best in that race. This is her distance. I think there's going to be pace in front of her in this race. I just think she's way better than she looks on paper. Dan, she's going to be a price in here. And you're right. Her 2023 campaign was sensational. I mean, really her only two off races were that turf race. Two starts yeah. back. That's not a surface she wants. And then the ballerina where she's running against Echo Zulu and champion Goodnight Olive over a wet track to boot. She's a lot better than she looks on paper. And I wouldn't be surprised if she actually drifts a little bit off that six to one morning line. Red Carpet Ready had a really nice start to her 2023 campaign. She won the forward gal going seven eighths. She won the eight bells going seven eighths. And then she missed a lot of time over the summer. And I like that Rusty Arnold backed off completely because it looks like he's got a nice four year old. Here's a return off of a lengthy, lengthy layoff in the six and a half furlong grade three hurricane birdie. And with that tactical speed, she placed herself in a good position. She always seemed to be traveling well. And once she gets to the outside, it looks like she's getting a little bit tired at the very end. It is her first start since July, but she got it done and she earned a fig. Yeah, good, good performance. I'm not going to knock this. I mean, she did get a really good trip in this race and the two horses that she's going to out finish at the end, they're okay. I mean, I don't think I'd like either one of them back in this spot, but they're, they're okay horses. Nobody could see in the replay that nobody closing in that race. I don't know. Listen, she started out her career undefeated sprinting leading up to that victory ride. At that point, I really kind of had no idea how good she was. She was obviously bad in the victory, victory ride. I don't think you want to hold that against her. She was fine last time, but I still have no idea how good she is, Dan. I, I think this is a pretty tough spot for her, and she's not going to be much price. So I decided to stand against her, but I think she can win. Hot and sultry, the number three. Her last race in 2023 was a true eye-opener. It was the grade three Chaluki going a one-turn mile. She showed blazing early speed, and she never really gave him a chance. She just opened up at the half-mile pole and kept right on going. Now, based on that effort, she's odds-on in the Bayakoa. 
draw a line through that race. She missed yeah. the break terribly. And for her to actually pass some horses in the stretch and finish fifth feet in less than five lengths was a good effort. So they show up in the Azari, they catch a wet track, she gets hooked up in a pace battle, and she tires. She's turning back in distance. And as a sprinter, not only is she one sprinting, not only is she a stakes winner sprinting, but she can win from off the pace. And I think that's a really, really nice little weapon to have in the holster. Uh, yeah, I agree. She's fast, but it's not like if she doesn't make the lead, it's all over for her. She can still run her race without it. And more than anything else, I just, I like her going short. I never liked her um, stretching out in distance. Um, the Chaluki is kind of the one race that she has right now that really points her out. But I, I think overall, she's pretty good. And I'm glad they're finally cutting her back in distance. Icicles, the number four, is much improved for a good low-profile trainer in John Ennis. Uh, this filly was a winner. Two starts back, going two turns at Turfway. Last time out, showed speed in the wintergreen stakes. Couldn't step with Chop Chop in the stretch. That horse has earned about 700000 in her career and came out of that race to run second in the Latonia at Turfway with an 82 buyer. We'll find out how good she is on dirt. She's finished first in her last two races on dirt, but this is just completely different level of competition. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it just feels like she's been really tough here. Listen, you're right. Ennis does a really good job. He's got a few horses uh, throughout this card and, and the opening day card, too, where he, they're just in good form on the all-weather, and he's going to see what they can do uh, on the main track here at Keeneland. Um, so we'll see how it all works out for them. I just felt like this horse was in over her head. There are some angles for the five. Mary Quite Contrary, who was second in the Madison last year uh, and against a very good one in Good Night Olive, two-time Breeders' Cup filly and mare sprint winner. I've always felt that she is a late-running, one-turn horse. They tried her two turns last time out in this race, the Royal Delta, and she's going to get a piece for third. I just don't think she has the same closing kick going two turns, especially at the short stretch at Gulfstream for the mile and a 16th, as she does going one. So give her some pace. You'll know her late. I I'll agree with that, and I feel like there's a chance that she does get the the setup here um my concern with her and my question for you dan is it as well as she ran in this race last year and i thought she ran great in this race last year she was never going to win but man did she hold her ground chasing goodnight olive all the way through the stretch so that was a really good performance and to me it's never gotten any better for, better for her since then i don't think she's improved one step since that race and i'm just starting to wonder she was so good for her original trainer and she just hasn't gotten any better. They've switched around to a few different barns since then. I don't think she's improved at all. Well, she certainly has from a buyer speed figure standpoint. That was a 96, and her best was the inside information, her most recent sprint, a 90. So she's really going to need to step it up a little bit. But there is there, if she can go back to the yeah. way back machine a little bit. Alva Starr is the six. She's fast. We know her game. Here's her most recent start in the American Beauty, her seasonal debut over a muddy track at Oaklawn. Alva Starr went to the front. Alva Starr is too good for these. Yeah, this was, a, uh, if nothing else, a great race to start back in as a four-year-old. Um, she's just way better than these horses. She's one to five. She had no trouble making the lead, and she wins for fun. Um, but a, a good uh, return race for her, if nothing else. I don't know, Dan, the theme of this race for me is, you know, just sort of a bunch of horses who are obviously, they look good on paper, and I'm just not really sure how how good ultimately any of them really are. And I include Alva Starr in that. Um, the priorist that she wanted, Saratoga, I don't even, I have no idea what to make of that race. She took over on the backstretch and then all of a sudden the race is over. She's got five on the field. Nobody does anything behind her and she wins. So that race I, I thought was hard to decipher. And then her Raven run, it's a triple digit buyer. Maybe it's the best race that she's ever run. How did she lose that race? Does she not want to go seven furlongs? You took the words out of my mouth. That's the question for Alva Starr. She's fast and she's talented. Will she be able to get seven, especially if she's softened up in the early stages of this race? It's the big question you want to answer before you try to bet her at five to two. Big Pond is the number seven, and she just got beat going this distance in the La Brea for three-year-old Phillies opening day of the Santa Anita winter meet. She then got her revenge on Daddy's Ruby in this race, the spring fever for California breads, and she just was always traveling well. Frankie Dutor he took the race this time to Daddy's Ruby, stayed on the outside, and she's getting away from her late. A good performance. Now she's stepping way up in class again. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, I'm happy to call her maybe the, the best Calbred uh, sprinter, uh, Philly and Mare out, out on the West Coast. I don't know what to say about her other than that. I liked this performance, obviously. You know, just another horse who I, I, don't, I have no idea what to do with her. And here, her La Brea, I get grade one. She misses by a nose going this distance. That's fine. I hated that race. It was a slow race. I don't like the horse that won it. I didn't think she ran particularly well in there. Um, I don't want to knock her though, Dan, because she's a really big price in here coming off of a really nice win. 
And she's never been that sort of price on dirt in her career. Her only sort of bad, bad race was on turf when they tried her a mile and an eight. She's a lightly raced four-year-old. You can project some upside. And she has some tactical speed, top jockey, and a good attack post position. So at 20 to one, there are things to like coming yeah. off a 94 buyer win. Vava is one of the keys to this race because how will she fare off of this layoff? She looked really good towards the end of her 2023 campaign. Perfect trip winning the Charlestown Oaks, two starts back around two turns, and then this win in the Raven run. Alva Star turns into the stretch with the lead. Vava was traveling very comfortably in the pocket. She gets to the outside. She has a lot of work to do. Johnny Velasquez, who's a border this day, just keeps her motivated and she just gets there in the shadow of the wire. Yeah, this is good stuff, man. She worked really hard from a long way out in this race because it just felt like Alva Star had all the advantages in here on the lead. And Vava just had to chase and chase and chase. And she kept doing it and she wears her down at the end. This is a, to me, that's a real quality win. I just appreciate how she just kept getting better. They finally cut her back in distance. It's what she wants to do. And she got better every time Cherie DeVoe sent her out there, capped off with that really good win last time. Let's take a look at our top selections for the grade one. Madison kicking off a 50 cent pick four. You're going with Sterling Silver. I like it. She's going to be a price in this race. She might get a setup. And just looking at her running lines, it seems like she shows up each and every time. Yeah, she's going to, I think she will. You can count on her to run her race in here, whether it's good or not or not. I guess we'll find out. It might not be. I'm a fan. I think this is a good spot for her, mostly because I like Vava, uh, the eight, and I don't really like anybody else who's going to be short prices in here. I want one eight eight one. I like Vava in here. I don't like the potentially low price. I'm not sure I would take anything less than five to two on anybody in this field, and she might be too short for me. I think Red Carpet Ready, as you mentioned, is a logical contender, although, as you said, I still think she has some things to prove against tougher competition. Big Pond interests me, though, if she stays close to that 20 to 1 morning line. I think that's just a little bit too much of a price. Uh, I wouldn't be able to resist that. 8276 for me, 1862 for Mike. Grade 1 Madison at Keeneland. Good luck.